Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant. Everybody hello, watching hello. this live over on Twitch. How's it going? Get not one, not one, but two Risk Five laptops to talk about this week. Yay. Got some Debian packaging stuff. Yes, we do. And um, <laughs> just for fun, we're going to throw in a brand new blue screen of death for Linux. Uh, it's going to be interesting. But first, <laughs> let's do a quick check in, see what's going on, what's new. I saw you were posting uh, one, of you, one of those uh, anime games yeah. in Discord last night. I sure was, Ben. So, you know, I'm having fun playing the beautiful game with absolutely freaking beautiful fantasy vistas called Genshin Impact. And actually, I'm wearing a Genshin Impact shirt with all the slimes on it that you encounter in the game. <laughs> mm. <laughs> There's pyro, anim animo, hydro, and et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of different slimes. <laughs> the only thing about slimes is I don't like killing them, even though you're supposed to. They're supposed to be your enemy because <laughs> I think they're so cute. <laughs> but... But uh, one or two of them eventually become a friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I just I I love I th my favorite part of the game is just uh, going around you know the open world and discovering uh, new places and new you know beautiful lands. Some of them are very magical, like fairy like, and then they you have your, your harsh deserts and and you know waves of grass blowing and it's just really really beautiful so i've spent most of the game just uh going and collecting things collecting um you know uh portal points and and whatnot <laughs> i haven't done much fighting i do some but mostly exploring <laughs> you know, like you're having a good time with it i mean there's no yeah. uh, set way to like sit down like you have to play the game like this yeah that's the beauty of an open world game. And it's right. really nice to be back, you know, back in one. I mean, the first one I really, really played and got into was Skyrim. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be back into one of those kind of games again. <laughs> it's good to have a game like that, indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been working on the, um, trying to take that a different direction, because you know a lot of us, and pretty much everyone listening to this show is guilty of this. Definitely guilty of this is. We like to get our hands on old server hardware, don't we? Oh, yes. We do. <laughs> we do. We're like, hmm, I want to play with that, or I have a use for that at home. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm taking that same philosophy with a bit of broadcast audio hardware. You know, if you follow what I do over on interfacinglinux.com, and that's kind of the take I'm going to be working on. At least for the video part, because normally I'm just like, here's the thing, this is how you get it working. That's going to be in the full write-up on Interfacing Linux, but in the video, we're yes. going to walk through, let's get this, let's plug it in and go through all the thinky bits that you're going to need for not just this particular piece of hardware, anything really, and see what we end up with in the end. So that's going to be the journey. I'm, I'm still writing that out. Fortunately, I recorded everything of me going through including using Windows 10, which just made me cranky. <laughs> yeah, it's slow and cranky, yes. No Windows hate, no Microsoft no. bashing, <laughs> just good old-fashioned of like, what is wrong with this thing? Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into it for this week, starting with our first, our first yes. RISC-V laptop. Our first risky laptop. Well, the world's first, yes, as Ven was saying, the very first Risk Five laptop is getting an upgrade and some Ubuntu love. Yay! So Deep Computing has partnered with Canonical to have Ubuntu Linux 23.10 pre-installed on their DC Roma Risk Five laptop too. So this is this is wonderful that all three of these companies are are coming together. To, to do risk five you know development this is very very exciting and space mit i'm not sure if i'm saying that right it's so excuse space me Mets. uh i actually looked on the deep com computing order webpage and the laptop is available for pre-order starting at only 399 dollars on sale i mean that's pretty good for a developer laptop 
Yeah, isn't it, Ven? Me and you have seen developer uh, uh, hardware that was much more expensive than this. <laughs> If you want to spend a lot of money on um, <laughs> Risk Five, you can do it. You know, Star yes. Five's got a, a couple of solutions that you can play around with, and yeah, it's on sale right now. Three ninety nine regular price is four hundred and fifty three wet stinky caches. If you want to do that for your DC Roma laptop, it's good to see Canonical yeah. playing around with this and get involved with it because I mean, it's the future. Hopefully, it's the future. Yes. Who knows? I'm hoping Arm yeah. would have something different to say about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they sure they sure would, but. Yeah, the DC Roma Risk Five Laptop 2 will be on display at the Risk Five Summit Europe 2024 from Monday, June 24th through Friday, June 28th in Munich, Germany. And there's also something cool coming from that that uh, conference that we are going to be talking about as well <laughs> very soon. <laughs> and yeah, thank you, Artharen, for putting this in our show suggestions on Discord. Now, are you ready for it? That's right. Yes. I even got a big risky <laughs> logo that's going to be bouncing around. You look up top yeah, there. Framework. Cool? Now you should be at least just a little bit excited. Yeah. Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. You know what? If you're not, that's okay. That's okay. But I want to talk about this Framework Laptop 13 mainboard. That's right, man. Uh, it's mm -hmm. got an unusual CPU architecture because Framework has teamed up with Deep Computing. They're going to be doing their own Risk Five prototype mainboard that's just going to pop right in your existing Framework Laptop. 13. Now, this is also going to be showed up at the Risk Five Summit over in Europa this weekend. Mm -hmm. This one's going to pack the GH71110 processor from Star 5. And that's got like four U74 Risk V cores. And like all the SOC stuff, unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, as you know, this is even the problem with like the M series. A lot of us have looked at Apple and Macintosh and we're like, oh, that's neat. Like, make sure you have your RAM requirements sorted yeah. out because that's going yeah. to be. On the chip, not upgradable, which is unfortunate. Same story with the Risk Five, and you know any type of ARM stuff. Memory is going to be soldered in. However, your storage options are going to be between micro SD and EMMs. EMM, I can never do that right. EMMC. Yeah. <laughs> storage and uh, the best part, like I said, you can just drop that into your existing Framework Laptop 13 chassis, or if you have one of those Cooler Master, or you just got a pizza box with moles in it that you cut in. Just stick it together. That's a beautiful thing about the framework stuff that they've been rolling out. And that means that you don't have to go out and buy a Risk Five Tinker laptop. You want to yeah. play around with the Risk Five? You see how easy it is to swap the main board out on a wonderful framework laptop? It's pop, pop, yeah. pop, done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You just drive that around <laughs> and you're like, oh, I need to go back to X86, do things, swap it back out, and you're done. Brilliant idea. And if, you know, Framework has ends up with like an ARM solution. Pop the ARM in. How and that makes laptops kind of interesting, even to me, somebody who traditionally doesn't like it. And of course, they're going to be working with uh, deep computing. Uh, so you're going to get Red Hat and Canonical on board to help out with the Linux bits. But they do stress this is a development port. Yeah. You know, like all things Risk Five. Hardware is one thing. Software is hard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You keep that in mind. You might want to turn this into your daily driver, but they do have a page up on Framework's website where you can be like, all right, there you go. Give me a notification, give me an email address, and they'll tell you. Yeah. I didn't see uh, no pricing information on this. So no, I didn't either. Can't be too <laughs> expensive. I mean, probably like 200 bucks, maybe three. Yeah. 300, 300 might be pushing it, to be honest with you, but like, you know, two, 250 maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I what think do you think, Joe? Good range. Yeah, this is really fantastic news. And I'm so happy that Deep Computing reached out not only to Canonical, but Framework too. Framework, you know, is my favorite computer manufacturer of modular, sustainable, repairable, and upgradable laptops. In fact, my next one is going to be a Framework 16. So <laughs> my next laptop. That will be awesome. And, you know, what's cool is that this announcement came right after Framework's announcement of major upgrades to the Framework 13 laptops that we talked about two weeks ago. You know, a higher resolution screen, a better processor, and even with uh, Intel Arc support. Really cool. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. And yeah. you might have seen some of the, uh, you know, be it Risk Five, be it ARM, a lot of us are fascinated with anything that's just not x86 just because it's a different yes. architecture or maybe you're interested in lower power usage 
and a couple of reviews of the Snapdragon that we talked about last week have kind of came out. A lot of them have been delayed because Microsoft hit the brakes real quick and like, let us take out that psychopathic AI thing that was going to spy on yes. you real quick. Before <laughs> you do recall. your... Yeah, dude. <laughs> Oh, a lot of people are just my, not happy with Microsoft right now. Like we would like to yeah. publish these, but what has come out is, and they, they immediately did the thing that I'm like, don't do that. But you know, it is fair. They're comparing it against the x86 gaming performance between you know what Intel has and AMD. So if you're going to look at it through that lens, which you rightfully should for a laptop, if that's your thing, is um, performance is closer to the you know it's a little bit slower than the Apple M3. At 1080p, low gaming, you know, it's doing the emulation and all that. Yeah. Maybe not all that interested, interesting in like a laptop form factor, but when you take that ship and put it in a Steam Deck size handheld, yes, then it's able to Sweet. give you performance that, <laughs> you know, we're talking 1080p 30, you know, this is where you would expect 1080p 30, 1080p 40, or 720 if you're talking about a Steam Deck for like eight hours, man. Yeah. I'm just Yahoo. like hard gaming. I'm looking at it like that. Performance will probably improve. I'm not going to like champion the thing saying it's perfect because this is like the first gen, uh, but it's definitely the most powerful like consumer arm thing that we're going to be able to get, you know, reasonable in a package that we can just start playing with. So, yeah, so true. <laughs> I'm excited about all of yes. this stuff. Yeah. And it's just so nice to have, you know, one of my favorite architectures, Risk, from the 90s, you know, with my deck alpha and, and, you know, sun chips and whatnot. And now we're seeing it uh, highly optimized and they're and, trying it again. You know, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> we're we're going to have options. You know, a lot of yeah. us, uh, you know, you might have, you know, at a certain age, like you remember a time, like we didn't really have, like on the consumer end, even back in the day, it was still pretty much, you know, we went from, you know, Amigas and stuff like that to, x86 x86 just one and it won hard yeah oh you know if you're a 90s baby mm. it's been all x86 except for arm you know on your mobile devices the idea of you know a desktop arm solution just doesn't occur to you I'm like mm, not really apple's kind of changed they flipped the thing on that yeah they did when apple started yeah. with the m1 i was like now that everybody else can copy it and it's taken a while so here we are yeah. Good times, at least interesting times. And I think a lot of us are most appreciative of having something to be interested in again. Yes, absolutely. And having, yeah, multiple architectures out again. That was the beauty of living in the, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. We had so, so much we could choose from. <laughs> Play around with. Now, yeah. moving on to package management, because, you know, you, you want a topic that will really <laughs> get people engaged. Aww. <laughs> Well, this is great for especially those people you know, that are new to Linux. So now that we have Ubuntu, you know, on the world's first Risk Five laptop, it is time for them to fix a nagging annoyance with the App Center. Yeah. So Ubuntu will soon be allowing Deb applications that you download to be installed in their software center once again. Woohoo! Like it used to be before the Flutter-based software center was even made. And of course, you can install Debs from the Ubuntu repositories from within the App Center, but you couldn't install ones that you had downloaded from other sites in the App Center. And I personally have been using the uh, GDB uh, GUI installer for years, and also I really enjoy Pop OS's Deb installer called Eddy, which is really nice. Although, like you know, me and Ven were talking about before the show started, normally I install a Deb using dpackage or apt in the command line. That's just, you know, <laughs> where we go is the command line. And so, but this is really great, great news because Canonical has uh, been getting a lot of complaints from people. We need to install Debs within the software center. So this, this feature will actually roll out very soon in Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. But if you want to try it sooner, you can switch to the Snap Store package to the um, hyphen hyphen edge channel right now the ed in the edge channel so you can go try it out right now if you would like mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting um if you run ubuntu and you use that i mean mm -hmm. it's not the biggest problem you got but just one of them so there you go though my yeah. big big thing that stuck out to me was sideload debs 
Yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to bring mobile phone technology. I know. Uh, I, I read that and I'm like, nah, I don't call them that. I'll call them third party debs or, you know, ones you download. I call them, no, I call them what they are, Debian packages. There's no, yeah. <laughs> there's no addition to that. They're just Debian packages. They're, yeah. Everything else fanfic. <laughs> it's just a Debian package. doesn't matter who it came from. It's just a Debian, which is just a archive of files in yeah. the Debian package. You don't need to put niceties on it. Yeah, sideload for the mobile crowd, for the Zoomers out there, so they understand. I get why <laughs> Yeah, I get why they would say it like that, whoever wrote this. Like, give them a good analogy that they would get. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, with all the malware popping up in, like, the Snap Store, I've talked about it, and Jill's talked about it, and, you know, with the crypto wallets and other bits, you know, the multiple times that's happened. And um, even on the flat pack side, not the malware, but how many I, I run into this constantly, the unverified, you know, flat packs. You know, like I've installed Reaper from flat pack. Why doesn't it work? And I'm like, because you installed Reaper with a flat pack. Reaper didn't publish that. Reaper would probably give you a functioning product. All these other issues. Um, the idea yeah. that downloading a Debian package like we've been doing since the beginning of forever yeah. is somehow <laughs> harmful or it's just crazy to me it is yeah it's crazy to, to think about that now yeah, i understand been, why they say it like yeah. this now i understand why they say it like that because you know you but anything that you download from super sketchy dot cx mm -hmm. is going to be a problem do you want to try to keep everything that you have on your system you know coming from a repository yeah, you do, mainly just for upgradability, but like being able to sideload. And like Joe was saying, we talked about it in the pre show. Go back and listen to that if you're a patron. Um, it'll be in the uncut version. The idea of an app store has never appealed to me, and I've definitely tried them throughout the years. You know, Debian doesn't have one, Fedora never really had one, Ubuntu's had one. Traditionally, I haven't tried their new one, the old one. It was slow, it was clunky, and I'm like, what is the point of this? It just angered and confused me because. Three words, three letters, followed by a tab button, is <laughs> yeah. all you need to install a Debian package from yeah, the command line. True. <laughs> That's it. You know, we're talking sudo apt install package mm -hmm. name. Now, you can still use dpackage. I, I still get some static from that, just like dpackage i, which works. Yeah. But if you use the apt install, you get dependency resolutions. You know, I use that when I'm in so downloading nice. the... um. I had to do that before Trackmania last night because Discord's decided that they're going to update the uh, Debian package for their desktop client like three times a week now. Which I, I go to start it and like download that and like I just do dependency resolution on that just in case I throw something extra in there. But all yeah. the Debian packages <laughs> that I make and I make Debian packages for OBS, I do kernel packages and driver packaging uh, for myself. But I use dpackage I for that because I know everything's right. Um, yeah, no worries there. No booger booger. Uh, I wouldn't call it a safer option, but I mean, I'm glad it's there. I wonder why that wouldn't have been an option because I think it was an option in the old Yeah, one. it was. And then they they redid the installer in with Flutter, Flutter, and which is, you know, it just took them a while to get everything finished, I guess. <laughs> it's there. Don't worry about yeah. it. Um, just close it, open a terminal. I will keep going back to this. You're using Linux. This isn't Windows. Learn mm -hmm. how to use command line. Anybody mm -hmm. who's uh, telling you that you don't have to know how to use a command line to run Linux, it's blowing smoke up you know where. Don't hey, listen to them yeah. either. All right. <laughs> Old Man Ven's trying to look out for you. Let's talk <laughs> yes. about the blue screen of death. BSOD. Oh, no. You know it. The frowny face. <laughs> OMG, Colonel Panic at the disco, baby. <laughs> yes all the way back in january of last year i talked about a new component system dbsod is being worked on to show logged error messages full screen you know we're like wait a minute that sounds familiar yeah. well, this is because it's effectively the blue screen of death but for linux however what if things get crashy outside of user space say like a kernel panic mm. well here it is. This is it. This is DRM panic. It's the BSOD for Linux. It's the DRM KMS drivers. Uh, it's going to be included with the kernel 6.10 and up, which is dope. So, you know, if it crashes coming up, going down, uh, boom, there you go. And hopefully it'll have some good information on the screen itself. Uh, Nuvo DRM panic patches are being worked 
on right now, but all the system D stuff, it should be ready to go. And Xavier, um, got a little yeah, a gentleman from over at Red Hat. So this is what it looks like. His little penguin exclamation point. And, uh, you know, the kernel panic followed by, hey, you could probably put some hopefully useful information mm -hmm. below that, right? Yeah. That yeah, would be and good. On Linux, it'll be a lot more useful than the Windows rhetoric. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> than those uh, VXD issues. Or it has VXD, yeah, the ability like, to. Like, it's yeah. like, admittedly, all the screenshot says is like, what does it say? Please reboot your computer, which... You know, if you put some, there's been some talk back and forth about whether or not they should include QR codes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, as long as it's useful error output, I don't care one way or the other. Like, and it's something that you'll be able to cut off too. But like troubleshooting tools, the more the better. Yeah, it resembles that. Why does it resemble something like that? Because well, it's not a bad idea. Like the blue screen and other, it's just kind of universal. Make it useful. Yeah. You know, yeah. give me use. Tell me what went wrong. Not not just like a dump of like. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. So if it can give me useful information, uh, especially information that would otherwise be difficult to get to and is not logged. Yes. Let's do it. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think and, it's a great idea and extremely helpful. <laughs> the only suggestion I have is if it could be well, maybe text penguins colors instead, maybe yellow uh writing on black or white white and yellow together i don't know text penguin colors instead of windows color <laughs> let's make it blink really fast yeah <laughs> oh, oh i know then even better we can make it an ascii <laughs> just like the little penguin was in the corner <laughs> <laughs> i gotta make all, all everything ascii <laughs> and people are gonna want to animate it and it'll yeah. just be downhill from there. <laughs> That's neat. Uh, and it's familiar. So yeah. There we go. Not one, but two opportunities to run into blue screens. That's pretty mm -hmm. decent. So mm -hmm. that's going to do it this week. Look at that. Everything just flew by. We covered not one, but two risky laptops, Debian installations, yes, and a blue screen and down. Again, <laughs> the second one. <laughs> Stay tuned. I don't, I don't want anybody to be um, surprised and terrified. <laughs> when they see a blue screen, you're like, who's pranking me? Oh, oh this I is like Linux. It. I don't have I... blue screens. You're like, but <laughs> you do. So before we get out of here, um, I do want to thank uh, Casey Clism, who has increased their pledge over on Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. And we're financing all this crazy stuff that we do. Not just this show, Linux Gamecast Weekly. We got other streams. We do Trackmania. Yeah. If you want to get into some 2013 retro gaming goodness with a good group of people, we got our own private server and we stream it on Twitch. Uh, we get over 1,500 tracks that we've played over the past year, almost two years, and we do that on Tuesdays and Fridays. Everything's over on Linux Gamecast, and uh, just link up your Patreon account, or if you're a Twitch subscriber, thank you all equally. Link that up to your Discord, and uh, we got a room just for track manias and pinned up to the top. It's got a server password and all the stuff and times that we get together, and it's very regular. So, you know, if you've been looking for that group of people and like, hey, I'm an adult. Making friends sucks. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, built in, ready to go. And uh, we're all hanging out, very welcoming. So, and you don't have to be good at it because none of us are. We just do it for fun. It's challenging. It keeps all of our digits going. But while you're over at Linux Gamecast, tap that support button. Speaking of that, we do have the Patreon. We have LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin, great ways to support the show. All the podcasts, host all that myself and ad free. Don't have to worry about it. Plus, with YouTube injecting video ads now. Oh, boy. <laughs> that they're not going to be skippable. Yeah. I got you covered. I got you covered. Buck a week. You get the video version over a patron. You can download it, play it, yeah. whatever you want. I make it myself and I put it up. I knew doing that was going to pay off at some point. Yeah. So if you all these years it has finally been. <laughs> there we go. Uh, just go grab that and watch it yourself. And of course, we got Amazon wish list. If you wonder what this blinky wall is behind me. You know, uh, I used to always watch how people were like, oh, you subscribe and I'm going to write my name. And I'm like, I thought that was just hilarious. So that's the wall of fine upstanding cannibals. If you pick up anything for the studio, send in a note. I'll put your name up there. We do a little ceremony. And Jill's got one as well with a bunch of uh, plushy notes. So if you want Jill to yeah, say or something. Penguins. <laughs> right. Contribute to the sickness. That yeah. is the connect collection. <laughs> and uh, store.linuxgamecast.com. We got some merch, you know, like little stickers. 
things like that. We got Frank's Obey shirt, which is great, which is not related to (laughs) Fedora or IBM at all. I don't know why people keep making that connection. (laughs) Strange and uh, humble affiliates, all all, all the like little things we got for the show. And of course, if you have questions and you want to talk to me about uh, audio, video, multimedia production, getting all that set up under Linux, uh, go to interfacinglinux.com where I have this, this brilliant idea. I call it a forum. Yes. Breaking awesome. cutting edge technology. Or maybe I'm just bringing it back. And uh, yeah, put your questions in there. I'll get back to you, man. Like, I'm there to, I'm trying to build a real database of actual solutions, not just people baying and slapping on their keyboard, and sending people in circles. Like, you know, I'm not going to tell you something I don't know how to do. Oh, interfacinglinux.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing the show. Time to roll some credits. Yeah, thanks yeah. all our beautiful patrons. <laughs> some of which I've been talking to, we've been talking to on our Discord chat. Our advisors, Omegas and Artharen, our executive producers, David, Drummer, Ishep, Ian, our Chicago Kicks level people, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasmia. Our sea monsters, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DSNG, Joe, Dirty Dean. Our Death Notes, Ogiwan, Casey Clism, Swine, and our chairlings like Mir and Chat and Nubbin. <laughs> Good times yeah, had to... by some. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got to thank some of them. So. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, get out there. Have some fun with it. Go play around. Let us know uh, in the comments yeah. uh, if you got some thoughts on these risky laptops because i'm curious so like are you gonna buy something like that i don't oh. know like <laughs> eh, i might i might not but we'll see you again next week right here on twitch come watch us live or don't i'm not your boss yeah. <laughs> bye everyone love you all <laughs> see if ben can do it <laughs> that's funny man